All right, well, good morning and welcome. Uh, do I need to, okay, I'm gonna bring up my presentation here. All right, well, good morning. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, some of the high mem API stuff that we're working on and um, discuss a little bit about what the future holds or uh, maybe get a discussion started. Um, as Mike said, you know, it is, um, it is interesting, all the different architectures that are out there. Um, I happen to work for Intel, uh, but I've also done work on PowerPC in the past within Linux. Um, so I'm familiar with, you know, the fact that Linux supports many different architectures and that's, you know, part of what this community should be striving for. Oh, let me see, do I have to click down here? Okay. So um, just a quick review uh, for anybody in the room who's not familiar with HiMem. Uh, it's possible that everybody here already knows this, uh, but HiMem is designed for 32-bit kernels uh, running on 32-bit um, machines with large amounts of memory. Um, the kernel only maps uh, higher mem pages uh, as they're needed. So the idea came about uh, long in the past, long before I ever was working on this type of this part of the kernel uh, to be able to use this additional memory beyond what the kernel could directly map behind the, beyond the one gig space by default. Obviously, that can be configured differently, but. Um, and then uh, effectively, a lot of user space apps could use this additional memory and then the kernel just maps it. So that interface, uh, that high mem interface became known as the KMAP interface. So uh, some might be wondering why I'm working on this. Um, sometimes I wonder why I'm working on this, but that's, that's okay. So about, Wow, almost maybe two years ago now, uh, maybe it was a year and a half, uh, I started working on a feature within Intel called Protection Key Supervisor. So some people may be familiar with user space P keys that are already in the kernel and upstream uh, that allow an additional overlay of protections beyond what the page table protections, the default read write page table protections that are available. And when I started working on this, um, I was doing this additional, yeah, ARM, ARM brings up a good things. Large amounts is still under four gig, right. But um, yeah, it's more like 768 megabytes, right? Yes, yes. Um, so PAE, PAE is additional address space beyond what the 32 bits could do. So, you know, high mem can be used for either just a 32 bit machine or a PAE machine. PAE can map additional, like, you know, up to eight gigs or, or more. Um, I'm just reading the chat here, sorry. Um, so, the protection keys that I was working on did additional overlay protections on um, kernel mappings. And this was a thread local CPU protection. And um, one of our use cases, and, and this is a really quick way to change permissions on, on massive amounts of, of page tables, uh, massive amount of pages rather, I'm sorry, without doing TLB flushes. Um, it's a really slick feature um, but one of our use cases that I was striving for was something called persistent memory stray write protection. And uh, for those of you who don't know, persistent memory uh, can map a large amount of space. And we were basically abusing the KMAP interface to get users within the kernel to be able to turn on and off these protections within the kernel without uh without having to modify every file system or any driver that was potentially mapping a persistent memory page and so i kind of fell into this 
working on the KMAP subsystem, which is the high mem subsystem and figuring out what to do there. Um, and, and so my use case was actually focuses on 64 bit kernels and 64 bit machines and using this KMAP interface and kind of modifying it. Um, but, you know, then it became kind of a, well, do we really need, um, high mem anymore? Etc. So I'm going to kind of present that. So that's kind of how I came into this um, and why I'm working on it. So these were the issues that I was running into. Um, page address, which is typically what uh, the kernel uses to get an address of a page. This is this is a, a function from way back. Basically, you have a page and you want to get the virtual address to that page. Um, on, uh, by default, this is very fast because it's just a mathematical lookup because the kernel maintains all of, of its accessible memory in the direct map. Um, but page address has no corresponding unmap function or corresponding, you know, map unmap, uh, uh, or in PKS's case, no corresponding unprotect protect call. So page address was not going to be able to work for us. And like I said in the previous slide, I kind of fell into this um, by saying, hey, well, we can just use KMAP because KMAP has a mapping and an unmap function. And KMAP Atomic has a mapping and an unmap of, um, uh, function. Uh, but we had another issue with PKS and KMAP, which is that KMAP itself, the actual function KMAP, uh, creates a mapping within the kernel, but that virtual address mapping can then actually be used by any thread in the kernel as long as that mapping exists. So it was a global mapping uh, for the kernel. It wasn't really designed that way originally, um, but it was the easiest way to make the implementation at the time. So because PKS was thread local, uh, I couldn't use KMAP. So I was starting to develop a new interface called KMAP local or KMAP thread actually is what I called it originally. And that led um, to some discussions on the mailing list and, and Thomas Gleixner actually created KMAP local page. And what this did was uh, create a local mapping within a single thread, um, hence the local page um, call. And he developed it in such a way uh, that it could actually replace KMAP and KMAP Atomic. So uh, fast forward a little bit as we're going along and effectively where we stand right now is that KMAP and KMAP Atomic, those actual calls are deprecated, um, even on 32-bit. And this kind of gets into where, you know, I'm starting to modify the APIs to high mem. So uh, the other thing about page address and KMAP is, you know, as I was getting into this, just the, they're just confusing. Um, you know, a lot of driver writers, they'll, they'll call KMAP because they know it's safe. But, well, do I call KMAP? Do I call KMAP Atomic? Well, now I got this KMAP local page. So, like, all these different calls. And then, you know, some people will jump in and say, well, just use page address. Um, and so this kind of just confuses everything about, you know, why do these calls exist? You know, some people also say, you know, as we move into a world where 32-bit machines and 32-bit kernels are much more prevalent, you know, a lot of people just kind of say, why do I need this at all? Um, so that, you know, that's more of what this presentation is about, too, is, you know, what do we do going forward? So as I was working on this, Mike also has been working on things to, you know, hide parts of the memory um, from the direct map. And so PKS isn't kind of the first user who wants to have a more structured organization and more structured access to the direct map, even on 64-bit kernels. So we kind of have this overlapping, like I mentioned before, we have this overlapping between this new use case and this new need for something even in 64-bit and kind of merging it into this existing interface, which is which is applicable to 32-bit. So KMAP local page, a little bit more details about it. It can be used in any context. 
disables ma migration, but not preemption. So it uh, effectively, it will keep your mapping and that thread on that CPU because it actually uses some CPU local um, and and uh, it store actually, it's, it's not just CPU local, it stores some stuff in the struct thread to be able to, you know, create some mappings. If, uh, if the thread does get preempted, it will restore those mappings for you. So, you know, it's a, it's a much nicer function. It's uh, um, because it can be used in any context, it can, it can be replaced. Um, it can replace KMAP Atomic pretty much anywhere. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the KMAP calls need to be evaluated because, like I said, the KMAP calls kind of introduce this additional feature, if you will, that the mappings can be used on any thread. And that's not really the way KMAP was designed because um, KMAP and the high mem interface was really to do a temporary mapping of these high mem pages. So the kernel could do a quick access to that memory, you know, say a user space page is being written or something like that, and then let it go. Because again, by definition, the high mem interface was designed for 32 bit kernels that, you know, really um, uh, wanted to, you know, it, th this, the low mem resources were, were, um, um, <laughs> I've forgotten the word I'm trying to say, uh, uh, um, scarce. All right. So, uh, this kind of over the, since I presented some stuff at LSF, uh, you know, we've discussed a little bit more about, well, do we even need high men? And Arn has actually, uh, written a great article about this. So I'm not really going to try to present this in particular, but I think some of the, dis the discussion that we could have today is you know what is the need for large memory on you know 32 bit architectures uh you know we've already had some discussions on the mailing list and some email discussions that it's very clear that we still need high mem today and possibly for a while into the future um but uh some of the discussions that we've had also center around and i and i throw out the also the, the question also about how much um how many cores are going to be into the in these smaller systems um i think really at this point most 32-bit architectures that are running with large amounts of memory are some form of embedded board or some form of embedded um system so my gut says that aren't, those aren't going to be large core counts, but you know, even your Android phone has eight cores. I think some may be pushing 16. So, and the reason I asked that is this KMAP local page, uh, you know, because it has some resources associated that are per thread, they're per core, um, that could push into the limits of what KMAP local page can do. So, um, you know, that, kind of factors in. I don't think it's really critical at this point. I'm but my gut says that any system that needs um that is still 32 bit but has large amounts of memory is probably also not going to have a lot of number of cores. You know, eight or sixteen is fine, but you know, so I, I don't really know what people if and if people have any feedback on that. So Anyway, something to think about. I don't know if anybody wants to speak up and feel free to interrupt me questions with chat or whatever. I see Arn is, is typing something. Yeah, I can, I can just talk here. So on, on ARM, we have very few 32-bit machines with 16 cores. Realistically, anything except for the Axia is up to four cores only. And on MIPS, I think the, the maximum that is affected would be a two car machine. Cool. That and kind of goes again. Yeah, PowerPC, there might actually be some more. I, I can look it up quickly and type it in the chat. Okay. Yeah, I that kind of goes with what my gut feeling was. Um, like I said earlier, I kind of fell into this work. Um, you know, I, I really like the fact that Linux is supported on multiple architectures. Um, and, you know, I, I, I love supporting that, but it's not an area that I'm super familiar with. So, uh, you know, hopefully I can research and be 
you know, hopefully it can help with this community, but you know, it, it's just, there's so many different architectures and there's so many different, especially when you get into these, um, these embedded boards, some of them are so specific. Um, anyway, so I think that as a community, we can get through this, but, um, you know, I'm by far not the expert in this area. So the next question becomes more of a software question, not so much about, um, okay, eight cores. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. And um, I don't think eight cores is gonna present any problems for the KMAP local page interface. So I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, so the question is, you know, beyond this, what I've already spoken about, um, KMAP Atomic and KMAP being changed over to KMAP local page, you know, you know, how much more should the high memory API change? Uh, again, page address works. It's technically there. We, we're actually, um, we're actually using it in some instances to get rid of KMAP calls where we know where the page comes from. I personally don't like this. I think that it's, I, again, I think the fact that page address exists along with these other KMAP calls is confusing to people. Um, and I'd kind of like to get to something where, you know, there's, there's a nice clean interface. The, but then the question becomes, you know, if we're starting to, to, I'll say force, but encourage driver riders kind of move to this new API, um, you know, we need to kind of have a good justification for why they need to do this extra thing. Because if you're doing a K map, K map, whether it's a mapping or really it's just adjusting the, the permissions on the direct map, which is what I started out, started doing on this path, you're going to have to have an unmap or a, a reverse operation at the end when you're done using that mapping. And, you know, some might see that as additional overhead. It's certainly additional code that has to be, to be tracked. So, you know, this is still kind of an open question. I think at this point, the API is definitely changing. Um, we've deprecated KMAP and KMAP Atomic. And then the next thing that I want to mention is this API conversion is ongoing. I've got a tiny URL here, but in at the end of my slides, I have the full URL. Um, I... Uh, created an outreachy project. Some people may not be familiar with outreachy, but outreachy is a, uh, an internship program to get people involved in kernel development. And I wanna mention right now, actually, I'll just go on to my next slide. I think it's here. So um, I, I got an intern, Fabio Francesco, and he has been working very hard on converting uh, as many KMAP and KMAP Atomic sites uh, over to KMAP local page. Um, I plan to try to pick up a little bit more of this work as well. Um, his uh, internship completed and he's gonna continue working on this, which is great. So we've we brought a new person into the community, which is awesome, but um, we still have a long way to go. So with this, I'll actually back up here. Uh, if you wanna visit this tiny URL and help work to, uh, um, continue this work. We still have hundreds of, we focus really on the KMAP side of things. KMAP Atomic, there's still hundreds of call sites um, across uh, multiple subsystems that need to be converted. So I'm tracking who's doing what. Um, I'm certainly, this is another call out for people who would like to help. And part of what you can do if you're, if you're helping with that is looking and seeing how people are using this. So as as an architecture microconference here, a, a number of you are probably working on some of these smaller 32-bit boards, um, and you know maybe you can see how people are using this interface into that high memory uh, by helping with some of these conversions. Anyway, that's my that's my spiel for help. So, hey, and one, Matthew Wilcox. Uh, go hey, ahead, Matthew, Matthew Wilcox here. Um, as, as I think you know, um, I'm, I'm currently doing uh, uh, the page to folio conversion. And so I've augmented the, uh, the, the oh, 
There you go. I, I've, I've jumped ahead. Do you, do you want me to shut up or, or shall I just say no, no, please, no, please go ahead because you know more details about it. Sure, no problem. Um, so I've, I've added one API, which is um, which, which lets you map a single page out of a folio. So you 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 get given um, two to the n folio, two to the n pages in a single folio, and you can choose one of them to map because that's kind of the API that we have right now. Uh, I thought this was going to be sufficient. Um, turns out I was wrong. Um, when uh, ext2 wants to handle a directory it can uh, a directory entry can cross a page a page boundary and so for ease of programming i mean obviously we could handle that right we we could choose to say okay we'll kmap two pages out of a folio but i i think for ease of programming really we want to just say oh i'm going to map the entire folio and that seems to work fairly well for what you want this for because you just need to say okay we will set the permissions on this entire folio to be accessible and then we'll drop permissions at the end right um now i don't expect there to be a huge demand for supporting um block sizes larger than four kilobytes and 32-bit systems with high mem like on, on the same machine i don't expect that to happen a lot i mean i think it needs to work but i don't think it needs to be fast and i would really appreciate it if somebody would tell me that i'm wrong Okay, nobody's saying that I'm wrong. That's good. <laughs> um, so, just to clarify, your case is where you have one object that you're mapping, and it just happens to span two pages. So your maximum in like the XT case is just two pages instead of one, right? So that that would actually work, but what's simpler from a programming point of view, if we just mapped all the pages in the folio, no matter how uh, large it is. Okay. And so my my uh, current proposal to do that, and I haven't I haven't quite finished writing the code for that yet, is that we just vmap it, uh, which is going to be slow and crap, but we don't care because this is not a use case that comes up all that much. As I say, the, you you have to have an ext4 file system with a block size larger than page size. So ext2 page size, block size like larger than page size. And those don't, there's not a lot of those around. Um, I mean, new ones are going to get created, I'm sure, but they're not common. And you have to be in a system that is 32-bit and has high mem. This is not a large set of platforms. and I don't know if we care how efficient they are. It seems like a case of doctor it hurts when I do this. Well, it does, but I want it to continue to work. I yeah. just don't think it needs to be fast. Yeah. And you're thinking hide the VMAP versus KMAP like inside the folio, in folio interface? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you just say folio map and it will either do KMAP, it, it will do KMAP on IRIS system and on some four gigabyte ARM32 ARM system, it will call VMAP if it's larger than a single page. If it's a single yeah. page, it will use, just use KMAP, uh, KMAP local. Sounds beautiful. Excellent. Great. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, uh, Matt. Oh, I'm getting an echo now. Anyway, um, thanks for being here. Yes, because, you know, I was going to bring up folios present a little additional complication. Um, the the other complication we've run into is some of these flush calls. And I and I put a, a bunch of stars here because these and, and this is another kind of question to the group here is these don't always get well documented. There's not a lot of documentation about when you call these particular, there's a flush decache range call in particular that um, we've put into a couple of the memory copy to and from page calls because they seem to be needed on some architectures. Most architectures seem to just, um, they, they're a no op. Uh, they get compiled out, but I did a little bit of research into this, and there's a whole slew, a whole suite of of these flush calls, um, and there's not sort of a set of documentation of these are the ones that are defined that architectures can use, and and then you know, so I don't, uh, you know, this is something I think that I'm kind of divorcing myself from what what our official stance is that. Uh, KMAP isn't going to handle that for you, and uh, it's up to the driver writer. So, if you know, hopefully, if you're writing a driver that's specific for an architecture that really needs this, you call those. 
file systems are where where things get a little complicated because you know they're they're you know a subsystem that's designed to run on multiple architectures. So you know if if people could speak up or maybe somebody can do some documentation on these. Uh, you know, Linus, there was a big thread in, in when I was creating uh, some additional helpers for these mem copies and Linus was saying, we don't need this. And then I, and Arn, maybe you jumped into that thread. I can't remember if you were actually on that thread or not, but somebody jumped in and said, no, 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 we still need those for some architectures. And, you know, so, Documentation would be nice because somebody like me who's kind of coming and walking into this blind is, you know, we're not always sure what to do with those calls. So that's just an additional complication. Yeah, and I think, did you mention, Ira, that the, the real question here was whether any of these had interactions with preempt disable? Because I think that's what you were mostly worried about, right? Um, yes. Because, um, because now you're changing the preempt requirements of these KMAP operations. And so the question was like, do any of these callers of any of these flush cache functions of which there's like 800 variants, like you said, do any of them have any preempt requirements? Because if so, you might cause a problem there. So yeah, I think specifically like if there are, if there are preempt requirements um, of these things, that's what you want documented specifically. That'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's we a good point. Yeah. So I, 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 I rather disagree that there's no documentation. There's plenty of documentation. Uh, documentation the, in the documentation directory, um, no, 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 uh, core API slash cache tlb.rsc. Um, the problem is that nobody reads it. And I mean, you couldn't find it for some reason, which I, I find bizarre. <laughs> what? Um, OK, well, let's that, do... like, could you put that in the chat? Or... Um, I, I, I can't figure out which room we're using. Um, I'll, 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 I'll drop it into IRC. How about that? That sounds good. And I'll go look for it. Um, the other complication that we've had is testing uh, for distros. Uh, or test, I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. Not for distros, but um, Ira, a lot. Of we have are one two minutes left, so please try to wrap okay. it up. I think I'm pretty close to done here. So, um, okay, let me get into this. Um, this this is some of the ideas I have for the future. Um, number one, I think, is we don't want to support new high mem for new architectures. So that's that's one of the big key takeaways I do want to get to. Oh, thank you for adding that uh, cache TLB. Um, so for all those coming in with new architectures, don't add high mem support to your new architectures. If you have a 32-bit board you're developing and you want a lot of memory to it, why? <laughs> it, uh, please, please help justify it. Um, we played around with different interfaces. Matt just talked about uh, uh, potentially using VMAP or something like that. I think that's what we really ought to go to is making this work, but not necessarily be efficient. Um, and thank you. I would like to thank all the people who have reviewed Convergence so far um, and helped us along with this. And again, I am making a call out to anybody who'd like to help. Thanks, Naira. All right, thank you.